Hello and welcome to this introductory video about quality improvement in healthcare. I'm Dr. Hamer, a clinical psychologist working with the Veterans Affairs Quality Scholars Program. This is the national interdisciplinary training program for doctorally prepared leaders and scholars in the science of healthcare improvement. Quality is necessary and due to different interests, quality improvement is actually quite difficult. Attaining high value for healthcare services should be the ultimate goal for any system looking to improve costs. In fact, healthcare teams may reduce costs and enhance patient outcomes when providers can fulfill self interests and collective interests simultaneously. As identified by the National Academies of Medicine, there are six dimensions of healthcare quality. Here, we'll be focusing on efficiency specifically how we can target this dimension of healthcare quality to improve the standards of care and the health outcomes of the populations we serve. The National Academies of Medicine defines efficiency as avoiding waste, including waste of equipment, supplies, ideas, and energy. In essence, efficiency means using resources to obtain the best value for the money spent by reducing quality waste and administrative or production costs. There are data that compare international healthcare systems on several metrics, including administrative efficiency. As you can see, some systems have performed better than others with regard to this dimension of healthcare quality. Every healthcare system has its own way of advocating for efficient processes to increase value. And although the language used to convey this is different from system to system, the core message of the languages remains aligned with the mission of reducing the burden of illness, injury and disability, and improving the health and functioning of the people served. There have been attempts to quantify broad administrative costs that constitute healthcare waste. Some investigators have examined waste within the context of smaller healthcare units, for instance, eliminating workflow processes that aren't useful, minimizing orders of unnecessary tests, ceasing multiple entries or duplicate documentation requirements, such as clerical re-entry of orders, and getting rid of excessive layers of administrative control, such as unnecessary approvals and sign-offs. Practically, inadequate communication methods, poor patient flow, inappropriate hospital admissions and lengths of stay, incomplete medication reconciliation. These are all examples of things that contribute to waste and ultimately inefficient healthcare systems. There is an estimated annual cost of healthcare waste that ranges from $760 billion to $935 billion in the United States. Waste in the healthcare system has been categorized across six broad domains. Savings from interventions that address waste may be an opportunity to help reduce the continual increase in healthcare expenditures. Some of these interventions include standardizing care and reducing variability in services provided, examining hospital readmissions to determine their necessity, improving diagnostic accuracy, examining variability in costs of supplies, reducing fraudulent practices, and understanding billing and coding costs. There are several practical approaches to reducing waste and minimizing costs. For instance, allowing each member of the healthcare team to focus on appropriate tasks reduces inefficiency and saves time. Healthcare professionals shouldn't be spending so much time doing work that they really aren't supposed to be doing in the first place. Another waste reduction strategy is to streamline forms to reduce unnecessary paperwork. Some other ideas to increase efficiency include following up with patients via email when this is appropriate, using group appointments for patients with similar conditions or concerns, and taking full advantage of virtual appointment options. When examining efficiency, most healthcare systems may track outcomes over time in the hope of improving patient care and healthcare value, if done well. These analyses are invaluable and a key part of healthcare improvement. On the other hand, 
Such before and after analyses may also be limited by factors such as selection bias, regression to the mean, loss to follow-up, lack of control groups, and inconsistently implemented interventions. There is a more novel and streamlined way to understand efficiency in healthcare systems. The learning healthcare system provides a means for correcting systems level errors. It uses data to understand the current practices on the front lines and determine areas that may benefit from quality improvement. The learning healthcare system also uses rapid cycle randomized tests of quality improvement projects. And because it uses rapid data, this type of healthcare system aids in system correction by uncovering errors that may otherwise go unrecognized. Healthcare value is defined by the efficient use of resources to attain better healthcare outcomes while reducing costs. Outcomes, then, are patient centric and based on a full cycle of care such that there's accountability amongst all treatment providers and they share the responsibility for improving patient outcomes. Finally, costs may only be reduced within the context of attaining better outcomes. If you don't consider patient-centered outcomes when cutting costs, this will inevitably lead to false savings as outcomes and costs are interdependent variables within the healthcare system. It's important to note the fixed cost dilemma in which most healthcare costs are fixed and insensitive to changes in volume and utilization. Put simply, clinical quality improvement typically doesn't generate bottom line revenue savings per se. In most healthcare systems, quality improvement typically creates capacity to do more work and therefore opportunities to generate more revenue. Although costs don't decrease, Improvement in patient and system outcomes ultimately enhance healthcare value. One way to understand costs associated with your QI projects is by examining the layers of costs in your healthcare system. This is important because the costs of systemic factors may lie within four distinct categories. Most quality improvement efforts impact healthcare resources that are truly variable or semi variable in cost. These first two cost layers are more amenable to systematic reductions of use of associated resources, which includes supplies and medications and direct hourly wages. Ultimately, savings with small reductions of waste are higher than directly slashing the cost of care and coverage. Although the third and fourth cost layers aren't typically the targets for clinical quality improvements, Healthcare systems may reduce resources that have semi-fixed costs to create greater capacity. Additionally, when the use of resources with fixed costs is reduced, systems may produce savings over the long term in future operating cycles. In summary, healthcare systems benefit from becoming more efficient as there is a positive association between efficient system functioning and healthcare value. With this dimension of quality, healthcare savings are seen when systemic waste is reduced. One of the most important aspects of quality improvements is to always attempt to use data to guide your improvement efforts. Efficient healthcare systems may benefit patients and healthcare workers alike such that improved patient outcomes and provider performance are observed. Regarding efficiency in healthcare, you may improve outcomes in a cost-neutral way and this will improve efficiency. Sometimes the improvement really does require an initial investment that will be offset ultimately by the increase in value to the system.